don't know. We'll have to see. I didn't know last time till I was that close. And then there we were. Now it's 29 years since we last saw you in New Zealand. Why, why so long and why include New Zealand this time? Well, um, what happens is you go down to Down Under, as we call it, and um, nearly always there's an Australian tour, the offing, you know. And then I would talk to the promoter and sort of say, okay, and what's happening down there? So when you go into Australia, and I also say, well, how about New Zealand? And um, th they can give you a pretty good line about, well, with the cost of sort of flying everything over and the, the amount of people and so and so and so and so. And the, some promoters will tend to do a little U-turn there and you, you end up with an Australian tour, you know. But this time I got in early and I said, look, if we're going all that way, you know, let's go to Australia, but let's try and get to New Zealand. Why? Do you have pleasant memories oh, of it? Oh, yeah, I've got very pleasant memories of it. I feel a relationship with them. You know, I don't think I'll feel strange walking out in front of a bunch of New Zealanders. You know, be like, you know, there's some connection. New Zealand in 1964, our first and only bout of Beatlemania. The symptoms were mass hysteria and mass purchase of hit records. John, Paul, George and Ringo were four lads from Liverpool who took New Zealand and the world by song. Of such adoration, not just in New Zealand, but, but around the world. How could you handle that? Um, one, two, hey, hey, Shut up! Shut up! Can we have a little hush in the studio, please? That was just me throwing my voice. Yeah. What was the question And most again? successfully. What was the question? The uh, Beatlemania. Yeah, the Beatlemania, the, being how, the subject of such... Yeah. I mean, I was a young kid on the other side of the world mm. who was wearing a plastic Beatles wig. Mm. I mean, how crazy was and it, it to have... it looked better, too, yeah. than what you <laughs> oh, were, than what you you got on today. I mean, how crazy is it that, to have... How did it feel to have people um, doing you such know, crazy the funny, things? The funny thing is, it really didn't feel very crazy. Although, when I look back at it now, it looks crazier than it felt. I think the thing was that um, we're young kids, we've been in school, we were looking at earning some money, trying not to get a job, really, but still earn some money, maybe get into music, maybe show business, all that. And it all came off step by step. So it was just great. It was just, wow, we got a job there Friday night, that's good. I think that it was uh, hectic, and, uh, but I, I never really remember sort of finding it very difficult to deal with. I suppose just we were just young kids. It was here that for McCartney and the Beatles it began, Matthew Street, Liverpool. In the early 60s, this was the centre of the rock and roll universe, and especially the smoky, crowded Cavern Club, the most famous club in the world. And the group played here almost 300 times. Local teenagers called them the best group in the world, and the world would soon agree. Um, I think for just kind of excitement and just the first time, you know, yeah, I think, you know, they have a special kind of golden memory. Although, the other thing about memory, I'm sure these, I'm sure I've blotted out some bits that weren't so good, because we did work long and hard, and it wasn't all fun. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say they're kind of better, because now it's a different kind of thing. It's now I'm a father of four kids now. And when I go out, we go out in a sort of different way now, and it's like I'm married now. So, that's very nice. All of that, you know, uh, puts a a great complexion on what I do. So it's just different. It's, it can still be as great and as exciting, but a completely different way. No birds. There's one way for you, you see. That's not allowed. There were certainly birds in the 60s. The Beatles had them falling at the feet of their hotel beds. Ready, willing, and welcome. It was groupies galore. And the world's favorite group wasn't about to complain. Back then, I mean, sex, sex, drugs, rock and roll, that was describing you, wasn't it? You no, know, girls, girls, girls would be more appropriate, you know. It was just, you know, you were young will guys, you, I blame the hormones. Will you be looking for any 29-year-old look-alikes in the crowd uh, in Auckland? No. <laughs> Why? Come on, tell us, tell us about but, it. You, you must have met some of the local women while you were in New no, Zealand no, in, no, in no, 64. No, 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 no. Shh. 
behave yourself. We'll keep quiet on that. This is, this is a sensible interview. So. 60 minutes. No, no, no. Listen, that was then, you know. I wasn't married. It was allowed. But um, now, ooh, more than my life's worth, Gov. What's an old man of 50 doing touring? Well, I asked myself some mornings. Uh, the thing was, the last tour we did a couple of years ago, um, I thought, well, you know, I'll have a go at touring and see if I like it. It's been a long time and stuff. And I was worried about I was going to get really sort of knackered at the end of it and really be thinking, oh, my God, you know, another holiday in or something. But in fact, uh, we ended up enjoying it very much. And the audiences were brilliant. To get out and see them is a big uh, tonic. Um, so with them and the enjoyment of touring and stuff, the whole thing, you know, turned out to be quite a success. Thank you, thank you. All right. Well, welcome here to Docklands. In London, a couple of weeks ago, a virtual dress rehearsal for the tour. Now. We're going to do some songs tonight. This won't be the full show because it's not all ready yet. But we'll give you a selection from all the stuff we've been rehearsing, all right? And this song's called Get Out of My Way. Now you're writing a song that's getting banned by MTV and probably not getting airplay. I mean, why, why again? I'm sorry to bring the age no, up again, right. but why a 50-year-old using... Uh, using the well-known f-word in big well, ways bickering you know now the thing is you know um at 50 you know and someone who's read books all your life and you've read good authors and stuff you're not really surprised by that language in art but a lot are surprised shocked even after all this is mr clean who's getting dirty You can't be surprised that it's not getting the airplay that it no, might No, 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 I'm, I'm not sort of doing it for airplay, really. It's not to do with that. It's when you write songs, um, songs appear onto you. You know, they kind of slip into your mind and you sort of think, what is this? Well, I'll get it down, whatever it is. And uh, in that song, the F word came in. Instead of saying mucking it up for everyone, which would have been acceptable, I didn't. I used another word. Everyone. And I don't regret it. Um, I don't really see it as being very shocking. What is it about the environment that, that does seem to affect you? Because, I mean, that's the issue that you've championed for, for now some time, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the awkward thing is, you know, people sometimes say to me, oh, you're just doing it for publicity. People like you are doing that. Well, as I said, I'm a father of four kids. Um, and we all, anybody, kids and grown-ups alike, you know, heard about this thing a few years ago, which is this whacking great hole in the ozone layer. Now, the first thing I think we all thought was, don't worry, they'll ban these CFCs and they'll make all this legislation, we'll be all right, and maybe it'll close back up again, you know, whoop, hope so. But that's not what's happened. They'll be saying, maybe in 10 years' time, you know, for various reasons. And I sense lots of people seething and going, no, you know, do it. Something. But they've got no voice. They can vote these people in, but then they can turn around and not do it. So someone like me, who is... I, in many ways, just like them, as I say, as a parent, and with these kind of concerns. And that's only just one of them to symbolize this kind of mess, you know, the oil pollution and stuff is another. Um, someone like me just feels I've got to use this voice, this opportunity of talking to you and hence people in New Zealand in order to talk some sense instead of just go, oh, yeah, you want to know what I brushed my teeth with this morning? Wow, we had great fun. It's like I've got to use some of this time to say, look, you know, any politicians watching or any people watching, I really agree with you, and I'm saying it for you, you know, that we want that hole closed. Please. What sort of material can New Zealand audiences expect to see in this tour? Um, bit of old, bit of new, but something borrowed, something blue. Uh, we just, a few years ago, I started doing Beatle tunes again, where for a number of years I didn't want to do them particularly after the breakup of the Beatles because it was all a bit tense and um, we all elected to not really do Beatles songs to try and get on with our new lives but um, I recently sort of rediscovered them all so and do you like few, them? yeah I like them they're, they're kind of fresh you know uh, after all that time it's like I'm relearning them 
can't remember them from 30 years ago. And how much longer are the albums going to, the Paul McCartney albums going to keep coming out? Well, I reckon until about 93, I think, the age of about 93 is when I'm, I think I'm, I'm going to have to slow down then and definitely get into the ballads. I mean, do you really see touring just going on and on until, until the walking stick stage? Well, till, you till know, I used to, I mean, obviously I keep asking myself, wait a minute, is it seemly for a, a gentleman of my, you know, venerable age to be up there? I've always expected age to stop me, but I get to the next barrier and then kind of look over it and think, oh, this isn't too bad. I mean, you know, maybe it will be, and I'm always kind of looking at this, this is going to be terrible, going to knacker me out completely. Get over there, do a tour and think, this is great, I love, this is what I love. You know, and I'm, all, I'm reconvinced again. But, uh, you know, I, I convinced myself by looking at people like Ray Charles, who's older than me and still gorgeous. People like uh, Muddy Waters, who kind of worked to quite an old age. And the perception of what old age is seems to be changing for me anyway. I could just be fooling myself. But at the moment, you know, we seem to be having a bit of fun.